coming up on Mountain News this morning. Many schools have adapted to the change and are finding ways to honor the class of 2020 in place of a standard graduation, and Hazard High School is no exception. And we go to Pike County, where a child battling cancer amid the coronavirus received a hero's homecoming yesterday. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Lacey Roberts, and thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. Today is Tuesday, May 5th, and this weekend and yesterday was gorgeous. And Brandon mentioned yesterday, get outside yesterday because the temperatures for the rest of the week aren't going to be looking too pretty. Is that right, Brandon? Let's bring him in to give us a look at what we can expect for today. That's exactly right, and we're going to see rain chances to go along with it. It's even storming in some locations this morning. Nothing severe, but some storms out there, especially out toward Laurel and Pulaski counties this morning, maybe up toward Rock Castle County, and then going back into central Kentucky. And you see, maybe here on the edge of your screen, there's a line of storms out there just west of Louisville, just west and south of Louisville, we'll go down toward Bowling Green. So we're watching that as well. This morning, we'll track it all out for you here in a little bit, hour by hour. Let's take a look at our temperatures right now, and you'll see they're in the 50s area wide and close to 60 actually over in Wines at the moment. So we're going to continue to watch those. A little cooler where the rain has come through over in Somerset. They're down to 52, but 62 in Paducah, 60 Bowling Green, and 61 in Nashville. So basically, we have a cold front coming in, but we have a warm front riding along our southern border right now down between Kentucky and Tennessee. So that's what's bringing us some of that warmer air at least this morning. 12-hour planner, 68 your daytime high, and chances for showers and storms will continue off and on throughout the day. We'll keep you posted on that. Have the latest forecast in just a few minutes. Lacey. Thank you, Brandon. A gas pipeline is shut off in Fleming County this morning after exploding yesterday afternoon. The pipeline is in the Hillsboro community and the fire was burning off of Highway 1013. The flames could be seen for miles. Thankfully, the explosions happened in a rural area and no one was hurt. Enbridge operates that gas line. That's the same company whose line exploded in Lincoln County, killing five people people. In a well-known building in Breathitt County, the Fairco Woods Coliseum at Breathitt County High School caught fire on Sunday. Luckily, no one was injured. WYMT's Camille Gear has more on that aftermath and what is this building means to the community. This gym is full of rich history. At the new Breathitt County High School Gymnasium in Jackson, Mrs. Johnson arrives for dedication ceremonies. Many teens considered building. it home throughout the years. I always dreamed about growing up uh, playing in this. Yeah, I have to hang the first two banners there, 77 and 78. But to the Breathitt County community. Well, it's just a landmark. And when you come in here and see all the wood and all the work and all the sweat and tears that's went into the gym, means a lot to all the players. And I think people that comes in to uh, playing here, it means a lot to them too. It is more than just a basketball court. You know, this, this place means so much to our, not just our school, but our community and uh, to me personally and to a lot of other families and, you know, and just our, just, just our town in general, our county in general. So I'm so thankful that it, it's not as bad as it could have been. On Sunday afternoon, the Coliseum caught fire. Well, um, honestly, it was really hard to believe. I kind of thought it was a joke. Uh, the impact spanned farther than just the 14th region. My phone, as well as, as a lot of people's phones, uh, really blew up with other coaches from our, from our region and our state calling and, and uh, you know, checking in and seeing if there was anything they could do. And it was supposed to be home to Breathitt County High School's graduation. We had planned on letting kids come in and, and, and do a picture session if they wanted to one at a time, you know, and, uh, but with, with this, you know, we'll have to reevaluate those plans and, and go from there. Though the Coliseum will remain empty for a while, its fans will pack the seats someday soon. In Breathitt County, Camille Gear, WYMT, Mountain News. Both the athletic director and the principal say that they are thankful for the many first responders. Without them, they say it could have been a lot worse. 
and a weekend raid that led to nearly 100 animals being taken from a shelter in Elliott County is leaving many with questions on animal on animal cruelty laws in Kentucky. Randy Sags, the owner of the Trixie Foundation where the raid took place, is now facing multiple charges of animal cruelty. Now animal shelters are hoping this will help change the loose animal cruelty laws in Kentucky. Jackie Brown with the Floyd County Animal Shelter says Kentucky also has an issue with enforcing the laws already in effect. The number one problem that we face is, is the laws that we have in place are not enforced. That's the number one problem is to start, we need to start enforcing the laws that we already have. I think that we would see such a change. Skaggs now faces 12 counts of animal cruelty charges and a separate incident in 2018. He was cited for 179 counts of animal cruelty and was originally allowed to keep the animals pending trial. But that trial has been delayed for two years. A man is charged with attempted murder following what police say started as a fit of road rage. Williamsburg police arrested 70-year-old Jerry Melton on Sunday. They say he shot at a semi on I-75. Police found two bullets in the cab of the truck, but no one was hurt. And last night, Governor Andy Bashir announced a total of 5,245 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the state of Kentucky. This after an increase of 163 cases yesterday. The governor also confirmed eight new deaths, bringing the death toll to 261. More than 1,900 Kentuckians have recovered from the disease and more than 60,000 have been tested. Many in the class of 2020, whether it be in college or high school, will definitely remember this year. Unfortunately, it is, an extra it is extra memorable for sad reasons. They'll miss out on a lot like proms and a normal graduation, but many schools have adapted to the change and are finding a way to honor the class. WIMT's Connor James shows us how one school found a unique way to honor their seniors. Driving into Hazard, you won't be bombarded with businesses on billboards. Instead, Hazard High School found a distinct way to showcase their seniors to those who pass by. You know, just doing stuff like that makes them feel like they really care. Logan Hall's face is among the many on this billboard. Working with Perry Promise, the school got these four billboards plastered on them, each face of the 2020 class. Uh, it's pretty cool because, you know, we missed out on a lot and a lot of people won't get to see us graduate, so it's cool for us and cool for the people that uh, wanted to come and couldn't see that. Besides these billboards, the school is working to still have a graduation. We're not going to let these kids go silently into the night. I mean, it's their job to make them have as rich a graduation as we possibly can legally by law. It'll be a little different. It'll be spread throughout the day, one person at a time, and nine of their loved ones will be able to watch their student walk across the stage. All approved by local health departments, and they'll follow proper guidelines. Uh, you know, it's a little different, but we take what we can get and we do what we can, so it's it's all cool with us. Because this, pro I hope this never happens again to a senior class. And even with everything going on, they hope these signs can just serve as a token of what the class means to them. In Hazard, Connor James, WYMT Mountain News. Perry Promise is also working with Buckhorn and Perry Central to supply them banners so they can also honor their seniors. As the coronavirus continues to impact plans and events, college graduations feel begin to excuse me, college graduates begin to feel the struggle of trying to find a job. With so many businesses closed, finding that first opportunity is leaving them with few places to turn. No matter the field, coronavirus is impacting the job search for graduates everywhere. As the uncertainty looms, graduates prepare for what's next, from staying engaged with employers to applying for graduate school. WYMT's Madison program talked with a few of those graduates about how they are handling the situation, and we'll hear from them in our 6 o'clock hour right here on Mountain News this morning. Since traditional graduation ceremonies are not happening right now, some people are getting creative to celebrate the graduates' accomplishments. One Mount Sterling family celebrated their daughter's graduation from medical school. Megan James shows us why the celebration was so meaningful. 
Months ago, Sarah McClanahan was looking forward to walking across the stage at her graduation from the University of Pikeville's medical school. But on Saturday, she celebrated with the people she loves most in the First United Methodist Church parking lot in Mount Sterling. She actually stood there in front of all of us and took her uh, oath, her doctor's oath, instead of doing it in front of people that she didn't know. So that just that meant that everything meant a little. It was just special to her. And I'm glad it turned out that way because she was naturally upset that she wasn't gonna <clears throat> that she was gonna not have a ceremony after such a major accomplishment. The small, intimate ceremony made the celebration even more meaningful for McClanahan. Dad, she said, I really like this ceremony, and she said it's actually better than the the bigger ceremony because it felt so personal. And uh, she really enjoyed it, and just just the family and, and a couple friends. And, and Dad himself and enjoyed the ceremony that. and couldn't have been more proud of his daughter. Seeing her stand there, you know, with that diploma and that, that medical sash, the, the doctorate sash, I still just see my little girl. So, and I guess I always will. I don't, it's, it was very emotional. It was hard to, I'm a little bit emotional now, just seeing seeing that chapter of her life and her, her getting ready to move on. On to taking her education even further. In Lexington, Megan James, WYMT Mountain News. Sarah will be starting her residency at UK Hospital in July. Pike County's Cooper Coleman received a hero's homecoming yesterday. The five-year-old boy was diagnosed with brain cancer in February. He has been at Cincinnati Children's Hospital undergoing radiation treatment since then. On Monday, he and his family came back to Pike County for the first time since February 19th, taking a small break before he returns for chemo. His church family welcomed him in the parking lot as the state Kentucky police motorcade brought him home. And just ahead on Mountain News this morning, the Kentucky Derby has been postponed until the fall. We saw a slightly different race go on in its place.